Hey everyone, Ryan with High Performance Consulting here. Uh, this video is just something I kind of threw together in the middle of something else I was doing. I thought it was kind of neat and worth showing. Uh, it's just a real quick showing you the different ways timings used on a turbo car in the drag, at the drag strip. Uh, if you liked this short little video like this, let me know. Uh, like the video, leave a comment and all that. Or you can always email me at High Performance Consulting at highperfconsulting at gmail.com with anything you want to see or if you have any questions or uh, if there's any way I can help you with your car or your program. Anyway, let's get into the video. So the first thing we'll look at is just what's on the screen. I have engine RPM in red, TPS in green, uh, boost in blue, and then I have the base timing value from the timing table on the second, ta on the second half of the screen here in brown. So this base timing value, uh, called base timing on the left here, is the timing value straight from the timing table in the tune before any modifiers are added. So this isn't the value it's using running down the track. This is the value it starts with before all our extra stuff is added in to give us what we want to go down the track. So I'm going to start at the beginning of the run, and I'm going to show you the spool timing. So this is the spool timing offset. What does that mean? That means we're pulling... 18 degrees right through here and then you can see right here it's bouncing the timing in and out to help maintain the boost so you can see that as we get close here you can see the timing starts to move as the boost flat lines we start popping the timing in and out to hold the boost there so i created a math channel where i took the base timing and added in the spool only so we can see this is the actual timing value with only the spool timing next we have timing retard number two or the launch retard as most people call it uh, you can see that it's 8 degrees here. It's actually positive numbers on this one in the table. So if we turn that on with another math channel, we can see that the timing, it does nothing to the timing until launch. It comes down, pulls the timing low, and then it brings it back towards our base timing at 1.4. The next thing we have that modifies timing is the drive shaft timing offset. This is from the Perfect Pass Traction Control uh, called Active Speed Management in the tune. You can see that it only activates for a little blip here, and when we turn on the math channel with the traction control added into the base timing, you can see that it follows base timing and then just pulls a little right here. Lastly, we have the TC roll timing, which is the wheel speed traction control timing. This is front versus rear wheel speed traction control, pulling timing to help combat wheel slip going down the track. So you can see that it's tickling timing out of it and getting a little aggressive through the middle here to control the car going down the track. And when we add that into our base timing, you can see it looks like this. So when you add that all together, you end up with this, the ignition timing value, which is the value after all modifiers and what is delivered to the motor. The reason I show you all this and showed them individually before showing you the whole value is, while it's not practical all the time to do a math channel to show each individual timing modifier, it is really nice to go and overlay the ignition timing and the base timing value on top of each other after each run just to see what your timing did versus what the base value was. And this is really cool because now we can see we can see that the spool timing came out, did its thing, we transitioned immediately into the launch retard, and then traction control took over. The interesting thing is we don't know which traction control was doing work here when we look at it this way. So we'd want to make sure that we looked at both our drive shaft timing offset and our TC roll timing to see which one was doing the work and which one we need to adjust, if either, after the pass. And real quick, before I end the video, let me show you the math channels I made to do this. You can copy these formulas if you want, or you can do it your own way. You know, this is not the only way to figure out or to add or subtract the base timing value. Do what makes sense to you. I just put this together kind of dinking around one night and it turned into a video for everyone. 